Hello, hello, and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. My name's Todd. And uh, today's going to be a follow-up video of the uh, JL Audio 500-5 amplifier that I just did a live stream on. Uh, if I remember right, I can try to link it at the top here, uh, but sometimes I forget. So, the reason why I wanted to come back to this board... Excuse my meter. Is because... When you start to uh, get later in the day, um, especially when you get my age, <laughs> uh, when you get later in the day and you're trying to get stuff done and you have you have deadlines you got to meet and schedules you got to meet through the day, uh, things can go south, or things can get forgotten, missed. Uh, things just happen when you're when your mind isn't one hundred percent on what you're doing. And today is a absolutely perfect example of what happens when you uh, get in a hurry I should say in a rush or you're just not 100% into the work that you're doing so uh, in the live stream we were going over the repair of the sub channel of this five channel jail amp and uh, after I had to end the live stream and I had to go do my scheduled tasks uh, i came back and you know continued working on the board and found that the uh, power supply transistors uh, were heating up which i think i m mentioned on the live stream i like oh it's getting a little heat here but i'll have to come back and check it but sure enough this one side here was getting hot well this is the transformer for the sub channel uh, this or these transistors here drive this transformer this transformer goes through this inductor goes to the rectifier and charges your capacitors with the transistors in that i had installed um, as soon as you remove power the positive rail dropped right to ground so you knew you knew right off the bat that there's what i at that time considered was a dead short across the sub channel output I had, I had my uh, high side drive. I have perfect high side drive here, and I just couldn't realize or figure out why I was overheating with having good drive. First thing you think of is, well, you have shorted inductors, and JL is notoriously common for having shorted inductors. Let me show you a fine example of a JL500-1 uh, that has a obvious shorted inductor. Let me grab the board real quick. I have a pile of boards down here that I use for... Oh, wrong one. This is not a 500-1. Where are you? There you are. All right. Sorry for my bald, gray-haired head there. This is a jail uh, 500 slash one. This is uh, revision three. This is a revision three board that has the single uh, output inductor. Which, if you're looking at it like this, you're like, oh, hey, it looks great. Nothing's, nothing's too bad. It did get hot. You can see the caps are actually melted. The capacitors aren't bulged, but the caps got hot enough to really warp. I think they're not. No, they're not. Uh, or that was just the way they are from the factory. Who knows? But it got hot really hot in my opinion but if you were to go like this and go oh man what is that that is what happens when you connect a impedance that's too low for a jail amp and uh, what you do is you end up shorting out the inductors jail amplifiers uh, are not one ohm amplifiers i don't care what you say what people say what people tell you Follow the manufacturer's specifications of an amplifier. If you look online, I think some of the jail boards can go down to like 1.6 ohms. Uh, but they're not 1 ohm amplifiers. Especially the 5 channel. This is not a... I don't even think this is even a 2 ohm. On my print, I'm showing a 4 ohm output. 
here for the sub channel at almost like 40 volts. Uh, so that's kind of key. I don't think I have shorted inductors here. I'm usually the captain tape here, uh, the transformer winding tape. It will be brown, it will be discolored if it was shorted. And I don't have any shorts on the output terminals. Uh, the uh, snubber network is fine, no open resistors. I could not find anything that was wrong of why I was getting heat right here. Well, guys, let me tell you a little something. These transistors that I installed on the live stream are not 540 amps. Guess what these are? They're 9540s. No, 9540s will not work. <laughs> uh, so you have a P channel and N channel transistor, and you just gotta. You can't put the wrong transistors in. Uh, so, yeah, I think the 9540 is a P channel. And we need some N channel transistors, I do believe. But they're all 9540s. So, most likely, when I reinstall IRF the uh, 540 ends and not 9540s, I'm going to bet money that this thing won't heat up at all. Uh, the sub-channel won't heat up. I do have a little bit of heat over here on uh, two output channels, which, guys, again, you know, why are these things as per manufacturer's directions, instructions, specifications? That's why we have manuals. That's repair techs. We don't read manuals, do we? Uh, I read schematics, but uh, I digress. But yeah, I got to resolve that heat issue over here. Who knows what it is? I got to get it all put back together, get an input signal in. I do have uh, all four drive cards are active, so I just have to look and see what's going on with the uh, signal. Or maybe the bias, but it doesn't look like anyone has adjusted the bias on this. So who knows? I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, guys, I just wanted to point out. Don't put 9540s in an amplifier when you need 540s. Uh, it won't work. It will heat up or destroy something else. So with that in mind, I will grab 540Ms, not 9540s. Now that these are all pre-bent for a JL amp, which I honestly don't even think I'd be using the 9540 in a JL amp at all, because JL amps are our uh, positive rail amplifiers, what do we call those? Uh, full bridge. Is it full bridge? Uh, not reference to ground. I just, yeah, blew me away, guys. So I do have the 540Ns. Let me show you guys how I made this mistake. This is how I made the mistake. So I have trays and trays and trays and trays and trays of parts and transistors. I mean, I've got everything that you can think of. Early on in the business venture, I, I was putting N-channel and P-channel uh, grouped transistors in the same tray. And as you can see right here, I have the 540 and the 9540 in the same tray. So when I pulled the transistor out of the tray, I, I looked at this and I saw the F540N, but I didn't see the 9 in front of the F. <laughs> so that's how I ended up doing that mistake. I have a bunch of 9540s on the top of the pile because I just received a bunch of 9540s. So there's an IRF 540N. Bunch of 9540s here, IRF 540N, IRF 540N, 
And last but not least, IRF 540M. And yes, those are all matched. Uh, I don't use anything but matched transistors. So these are 540Ns. These are 9540Ns. And that's how I did that, guys. That's what happened. I just grabbed the wrong transistors out of the tray, installed them, and then found out that they don't work. Well, of course they don't work. P channel and N channel. Uh, just like your NPNs and PNP bipolars. You just got to watch what you're doing. So I do, you know, I do thank you guys for watching. Hey, I have a good buddy of mine here, uh, Cardi and Cardi, uh, on YouTube, Cardi and Cardi, uh, please look him up, uh, check him out. He's a great guy. He's very friendly and very polite. Um, I'm sure we have different techniques and how we repair things, but still a great guy. He's trying to build his channel. Go check him out. Cardi and Cardi. Again, guys, uh, keep your fingers out of the rails, stay safe. Some of these amplifiers can have extremely high voltages that can give you a really bad day. Um, so on top of that, thanks for watching, guys. If you got any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And all, you can always get a hold of me during business hours on my website, elmsburgamplifier.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next one.